Hello and welcome to another edition of Rumbo and English. How's it going? Sorry? How's it going? Annie, who's with me in the studio. Hello, Annie. Hello. How, how are, are you? you? Fine. How do we answer when someone asks you, how's it going? Fine. Fine, I'm thanks. Very good, thank you. Fine. Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. Absolutely fine. Isn't it strange when we ask this type of question, when we ask how someone is, how's it going? How's tricks? How are things? We always say fine. Independientemente de si estamos bien o no. Okay. Igual que en español. Es curioso. Es, sí. ¿Cómo se dice es curioso? Bueno, en español puedes decir estoy mal. Sí. Sí. Nosotros no. We will say I'm fine, even if you feel awful. I'm fine. Okay. How mm -hmm. do you say curioso? Is curiously. No. No. Cuando una cosa es curiosa. It's funny. We say it's funny. It's strange. It's strange, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Curious exists as an adjective in English, but it means curioso in the sentido de, de tener muchísima curiosidad. Mm -hmm. For example, a cat can be very curious. A little kitten. A kitten is. Un, un, un gatito. Boy, un gatito. No, un pollito. <laughs> <laughs> un gatito. A kitten. Okay. okay. A cat and a kitten. Okay. Okay. Uh, a kitten can be very curious. So, we don't say something's curious, huh? Like, uh, oh, that's curious. No. Esto es un spanglish, spanglicismo claro. total. Espanglicismo. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's interesting. Oh, that's strange. That's funny. Okay? Um, Como decimos también independientemente? Otra palabra que utilicé. Independientemente. We don't say independently. We say regardless. Regardless. Regardless of whether you feel... We will say fine regardless of whether we feel fine or not. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do today, Annie? The indirect questions. Not the indirect questions, you know. Indirect. Indirect questions. ¿Por qué? No podemos decir the indirect questions. Porque estamos hablando de preguntas indirectas en general. Okay. Y por eso no empleamos el artículo. Muy bien. Today we're going to look at indirect questions. You can present it to people. Camera on Annie, please. <laughs> Today we are look at... Look we're going to look at... We, okay, we're take two, take two. Toma dos. <laughs> Annie, present today, the next point. Today we are going to look at indirect questions. Good. Good. Indirect questions, more or less. Bien. <laughs> What's an indirect question? An indirect question is a question you don't ask directly. Okay. It's not rocket science. Huh? This is pretty easy. But hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and thousands and millions of, Spani of Spaniards, <laughs> of Spaniards, make mistakes with indirect questions. Let's start looking at a direct question. Mm? Mm -hmm. a direct question on the following one. ¿Qué hora es? What time is it? Bien. Muy bien. What time is it? This is a direct question. Una pregunta que hacemos directamente. What time is... Verbo. It. it. Okay? Bien. Sujeto. Verbo, sujeto. What time is it? Ahora, hazme la siguiente pregunta. ¿Sabes qué hora es? Do you know what time it is? Do you know what time it is? ¿Qué hacemos? Invertimos el sujeto del verbo. En este contexto, estamos hablando de una pregunta directa, pero la pregunta directa es... Do you know? ¿Sí o no? ¿Sabes o no? La otra parte de la pregunta es indirecta. Ok. Do you know? Una pregunta directa. What time? It is. Sujeto verbo. Y esta es la regla de oro cuando se trata de preguntas indirectas. Uh -huh. Siempre ponemos el sujeto seguido del verbo. Ok? Ok. All right? All right. Bien. We're going to start then with some very, very basic indirect questions, all within the context of the same type of question. Do you know if? Okay. Vale? Muy fácil. Mm. ¿Sabes si está lloviendo? Do you know if it's raining? Good. Do you know if it is raining? No podemos decir, do you know if is it raining? Okay. Okay. Do you know if it, sujeto, is raining? Verbo. Mm -hmm. Bien. Uh, ¿Sabes si, si vienen? Do you know if they come? Vienen ahora. Ahí hay que emplear el presente Continuo, if they ha. are coming. 
are coming. Again? Do you know if they are coming? Okay, do you know if they are coming? They, sujeto, are, verbo. ¿Vale? Uh -huh. Bien, muy fácil. Mm, ¿Sabes si lo hizo? Do you know if, they, if he did it? Muy bien, perfecto. Do you know if he, sujeto, did, verbo, it? Uh -huh. Complemento. <risa> Qué aburrimiento, <risa> gramática, ¿no? Bien, do you know if he did it? Sujeto, verbo. Eso es muy fácil dentro del contexto de preguntas como do you know if. Ahora, se complica más cuando sustituimos la palabra if por palabras como what. Ahí es donde empiezan los, los problemas. Ok. ¿Vale? Por ejemplo, um, ¿sabes qué hora es? Do you know what time it is? Do you know what time it is? La pregunta que vimos antes. Do you know what time it is? Sujeto verbo. Jamás podemos decir, do you know what time is it? <risa> es que suena horrible. Ok. ¿Vale? vale. Um, ¿Sabes cuál es su nombre de él? Do you know what his name is? Do you know what his name, sujeto, is, verbo. Fácil, ¿no? Fácil. Fácil, pero luego pero muchísima me gente sí, no, no, se equivoca. Yo me siempre. Bien. Um, another example. Uh, ¿Sabes qué son estos? Do you know what they are? Do you know what they are? Do you know what these are? Good. Do you know what these are? Sujeto, verbo. Ok. ¿Vale? Y jamás, do you know what are, are these? these? ¿Vale? Are these. Uh -huh. Bien. Um, ¿Sabes lo que dijo él? Do you, know, do you know what he says? What, lo que dijo. What he said. Do you know what he, sujeto, said, verbo. Uh -huh. Bien, cambiamos. ¿Sabes cuándo? ¿Mm? Pero antes de eso vamos a hacer preguntas directas y luego convertirlas en indirectas. Indirecta. Okay? Just okay. to complicate things a little bit. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Sure? Yes. Quite sure? Full of energy. Okay, let's go then. Um, ¿Cuándo empieza el concierto? When the concert... No, pregunta directa. When... When does the concert begin? When does, hace falta el auxiliar does. When does the concert begin? Muy bien. Ok. Ok. When does the concert begin? Um, ¿Sabes a qué hora o cuándo empieza el concierto? Do you know what time the concert begin? Begin? Began. Begins. Begins. Cuando empieza. Ok. Do you know what time, time the, concert. the concert, sujeto, begins, verbo. Okay. Y nunca, do you know what time begins the concert? Y menos todavía, do you know what time does the concert begin? Do you know what time the concert, sujeto, begins, verbo. Voy a ser muy, muy, muy pesado en este programa porque es un error básico que cometen miles y miles de españoles, ¿ok? All right. Y vamos a insistir y insistir y insistir, ¿ok? Ok. Y luego me podéis apagar con el mando, <laughs> cuando queráis, pero no antes de de absorber esta lección, ¿vale? ¿Ok? Bien. Um, estamos con do you know when, ¿no? Pero otra pregunta con when. Directa. ¿Mm? Ok. Um, ¿Cuándo lo hizo? When does he do it? No. When... <risa> when... When... En pasado. When does he do it? En pasado. When... When did he do it? When did he do it? Bien. Pregunta directa. Ahora, ¿sabes cuándo lo hizo? Do you know... When he did it. Bien. You have to think about that. Yeah. I know. I need to... Because you nearly said when. Do you know when did he... No. When. Do you know when? He, sujeto. Did it. Verbo. All right. ¿Vale? Okay. Otro. Um, ¿Sabes? No. Directo. ¿Cuándo ganó Inglaterra el Mundial? El Mundial es the World Cup. When did in England win... England, no. England. 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 When did England win the cup? The World Cup. The World Cup. Good. Bien. Directo. What, do you know when England? Me lo estás diciendo. Eso es indirecto. Do you know when England won the World Cup? Bien. Ahora. Lo que acabo de decir yo. <laughs> no se ha dado cuenta que me lo estabas soplando. Yeah. <laughs> do you know when England win the World Cup? One. Pasado. Ok. Win. One. Ok. No hagas eso, nunca. No, and this is, this is true for everybody at home. Please never, ever say, do you know when England win? Won, won. Won. Do you know when England won? You have to practice your verbs again and again and again until you no longer have to think, win, won, won. Okay? okay? Do you know when England won? 
No hay que pensar. Cuanto menos pensáis, mejor. Ok. <risa> vale. Do you know? Do you Otra know? vez, todo el ejercicio. Y bien, sin vale. que yo lo fastidie. ¿Ok? Vale. Eh, ¿Cuándo ganó Inglaterra el Mundial? Directa. Pregunta directa. Boom. When did England win the World Cup? Good. When did England win the World Cup? ¿Sabes cuándo ganó Inglaterra el Mundial? Do you know when England won the World Cup? Muy bien. Do you know when England, sujeto, won? Verbo. Sujeto, verbo. Siempre en esta, este orden. Mejor. Mm -hmm. Bien. Do you know when England won the World Cup? ¿Cómo pronunciamos Inglaterra? England. England. ¿Y no? England. England. So, England. ¿Dónde cae o recae el énfasis? En la primera sílaba. Mm -hmm. ¿Eh? When England won the World Cup. England won the World Cup many, many years ago. Mm -hmm. In 1966. Oof. So before I was born. Oh my God. <laughs> There we go. We're pathetic at football, by the way. Okay, uh, let's change them. We'll go on to... ¿Sabes quién? Pero haremos el mismo ejercicio yendo o empezando con preguntas directas y luego convier convirtiéndolas, convirtiéndolas, convirtiéndolas en indirectas. Ok. <laughs> Bien, ok. Um, ¿Sabes quién lo hizo? No. Eh, no, de... ¿quién lo hizo? ¿Quién lo hizo? Wakey, wakey. <laughs> Who did it? Who did it? <laughs> Who did it? Vale. ¿Sabes quién lo hizo? Do you know who did it? Bien. Ok. Do you know who did it? Who did it? Bien. Um, ¿Sabes quién es ese hombre? Ese hombre ahí. Do you know who that man is? Vale. Do you know who that man is? Sujeto, verbo. Vale. Mm -hmm. Cambiamos otra vez. A... Uh, mm, Let's look at my notes. Do you know how? ¿Sabes cuánto? How. How much. Entonces, um, ¿cuánto vale esta magnífica taza? How much, how much does it cost? No, no, no how much how does ma it cost, sino how much is sujeto. How much does that, mo does does that mug cost? How much does that mug? That mug or this mug, cuando this hablo mug. yo, que le tengo en la mano. Okay. How much does this mug cost? Muy bien. ¿Sabes cuánto vale... Esta taza tan preciosa. Do you know how much this mug costs? Muy bien. Do you know how much this mug costs? This mug, sujeto. Costs, verbo. Mm -hmm. Jamás podríamos decir, do you know how much does this mug cost? Porque entonces tendrías dos preguntas directas en la misma frase. Mm -hmm. ¿Vale? All right. Bien. Um, ¿Cuánto fue tu coche? ¿Cuánto costó tu coche? Ah. Eh, how much your car costs? How much? Vas a... How much did your car cost? How much did your car cost? Pregunta directa. Ahora, indirecta. Eh, ¿Sabes cuánto costó tu coche? Do you know how much your car costs? Good. Do you know how much your car... No, cost. 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 Do you know how much your car cost? Sujeto y verbo. Mm -hmm. Bien. This is one example of indirect questions, there are many more. For example, um, it doesn't matter. No importa, it doesn't matter, okay? No importa cuánto costó. It doesn't matter how much did it No, ¿ves? Oh. Muy bien, me alegro mucho que hayas cometido este error tan espantoso. Okay. Casi tan espantoso como los míos en español. Bien. Um, do you know? No. no, it doesn't matter. Estamos diciendo, ¿no? It doesn't matter how, how much, much your car, sujeto, cost, cost, verbo. No podemos decir lo que acaba de decir Ani, que era? No, ma it doesn't matter how much, uh, how much did, did it, it cost. cost. Jamás, porque tienes dos. Bueno, dos. la pregunta es indirecta, ¿ok? It doesn't matter how much it cost. Ok. Vale, no importa lo que haces. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what You do. Um, no importa por qué lo hicieron. It doesn't matter why they do that. In the in pasado. Why they did that. Good. It doesn't matter why they, sujeto, did that. Verbo. Sujeto, verbo. Siempre. Sujeto, verbo. Okay. Y jamás al revés. Ni con does, ni did. Blah. Okay? It doesn't matter how much. Or it doesn't matter why they, sujeto, did that. Verbo. Vale. Vale. Fenomenal. Okay. Um, no importa dónde vivas. Vivas, ¿no? Vivas. 
it doesn't matter <laughs> where you where you live. Te puedes meter conmigo con mis errores también, no, no me importa. It doesn't matter where you live. ¿Mm? No? Perfecto. It doesn't matter where you, sujeto, live. It doesn't matter where you live. No podemos decir it doesn't matter where do you live. ¿Vale? Ok. ¿Vale? Vale. Vale. Muy bien. Eh, no importa cómo lo haces. It doesn't matter how you do that. Good. It doesn't matter how you do it or do that. It doesn't matter how you, sujeto, do that. ¿Ok? Ok. Bien. Otro ejemplo. No lo sé. No sé dónde vive. I don't know. I don't know where, where he lives. Good. I don't know where he, sujeto, lives. Lives. Verbo. Es muy fácil. Es muy fácil, pero en la práctica no resulta tan fácil. Mm -hmm. A no ser que lo practiques 10.000 veces, como estamos haciendo aquí, un poquito, ¿no? Bien. Um, no sé... No sé cuánto cuesta. I don't know how much it costs. It costs. I don't know how much it, sujeto, costs. No sé cuánto cuesta el sartén. I don't know how much the fried pan... Frying. Frying pan frying. costs. Frying. Yeah. Frying. Frying pan costs. Costs. I see. Costs. OK. OK. Uh, the third person singer the third person singular of the present simple of the verb to cost or the verb to last que significa durar is difficult because we have costs dos ahí costs okay okay do you remember our little trick uh, to help you practice this just say cost 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 and then imagine you know when you're in the car you're sitting in the car you've got the radio on you're listening to some music and you you come to a traffic light yeah? Okay. A un semáforo. Llegas a un semáforo y paras. Hmm? Mm -hmm. You stop at the traffic light and you've got the music on and, and you're bored. So you start going... Tss, 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 tss. <laughs> That's the sound you need to make when you say costs. Okay? So we have the symbol. This can be our symbol, for example. We go... Tss, 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 tss. Okay? <laughs> costs. Again. Costs. Tss. No. Costs. 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 Costs, 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 costs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good. Costs last. Siempre dura cinco minutos. <laughs> it always... It always... <laughs> long. Last. Last. Five minutes. Last. 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 It always lasts five minutes. Again. Last. It always lasts five minutes. It always lasts five minutes. Um, vale tres euros. It... Costs uh, three euros. No sé... ¿Cuánto vale? I don't know how much it costs. Bien. I don't know how much it costs. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. So that's a nice little trick, a nice way of remembering how to pronounce that final S on verbs that end in ST. Costs. Lasts. Okay? Okay. That way you won't get tied with your tongue. Mm -hmm. Okay? Costs. Again? Costs. Again? Costs. Perfecto. Bien. Let's move on to something different. Okay. We're going to look now at an expression. The expression to have trouble doing something. To have trouble doing something means experimentar problemas mm -hmm. o tener problemas para hacer algo. Mm -hmm. Okay. In English, it's much, much more common to use the word trouble than problems. Okay. Trouble se escribe trouble, pero se pronuncia trouble. Trouble. Dos cosas aquí que hacéis mal. Primero, el sonido de la vocal, decimos tra, así tirando para abajo la mandíbula. ¿Mm? Tra, tra. Y luego, la B nuestra es mucho, mucho más importante que la vuestra. No es más importante, sino suena más. Tra, bl. Milo café en mis labios. Bl, bl, bl. Tra, bl. Tra, bl. Tra, bl. Tra, bl. Vamos a exagerar un poquito. Tra, bl. Tra, bl. Tra, bl. <laughs> Trouble. <laughs> Trouble. Bien. Before we started the show, uh, Bea said to me, Bea, is, as you know, is, is working in the, the control room there. Um, hello, Bea. How's it going? She said to me, what's the difference between trouble and our verb for viajar, which is? Travel. Travel. There are two differences. Firstly, in the sound of the vowel, trouble, problemas, 
tra y tra, así, tra, con la boca así en un, una, como un rictus, como la, la sonrisa de la muerte, uh -huh. travel, ¿ok? Travel y la V también, en travel, de viajar, es una V y no es una B inglesa. Travel, I like traveling, but I have trouble doing something. Bien, volvemos a nuestra expresión, to have trouble doing something. Significa tener problemas y siempre cuando va seguido de un verbo, uh -huh. ¿m? el verbo va en el gerundio, acabado en ing. Ok. Ok, I have trouble remembering people's names. I had trouble parking this morning. Ok, right. Ani, eh, tuve problemas mm, o tengo problemas para aprender inglés. I have trouble. 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 Tra I have trouble. A ver, vamos a fijarnos en la mandíbula de Ani. Trouble. Todos, ¿eh? Trouble. Para abajo. Tra. Tra. Eso es. Trouble. Eso. Y ahora los labios. Trouble. Trouble. Bien. I have trouble learning trouble. English. Again. I have trouble. 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 Mm -hmm. Trouble learning English. I have trouble <laughs> learning English. Tengo problemas para pronunciar bien esta, esta palabra. <laughs> I have. Ah, ok. I have trouble. To, trouble. I have trouble. Eso es. To pronounce. No. Va seguido de un gerundio. I have trouble pronouncing. Pro pronouncing. Again. Okay. I have trouble pronouncing. T tengo problemas para ver. I have trouble uh, seeing. Seeing. I have trouble seeing. Well, I shall lend you my wonderful glasses. Would <laughs> okay. you like to put them on? Okay. Just for you. Bien. <laughs> <laughs> tengo problemas para no reírme. I have trouble. <laughs> I have trouble. Not laughing. Not laughing. I have trouble not laughing. I have trouble paying my bills. I have trouble paying my mortgage. Mortgages. Una hipoteca. No sé, ah, okay. Okay, a mortgage. That's what everybody's talking about at the moment because everybody has trouble paying their mortgage. And even if you don't have trouble, es que duele. It okay. hurts. Bien, so I have trouble doing something. Annie, do you have trouble understanding me? No, I don't have trouble understanding you. Bien, en el negativo, es muy común decir I don't have any trouble. Okay. Or I have no trouble. I have no trouble understanding Annie. Okay? Do you have trouble understanding me? I hope not. But if you do, don't worry, because by the time you've watched 30 or 40 or 50 of these programs, you'll understand pretty much everything I'm saying. And this is true for everybody. Getting used to people's accents, acostumbrándote a los acentos diferentes nuestros, mm -hmm. los acentos ingleses, los acentos norteamericanos, los acentos australianos, simplemente es cuestión de acostumbrar el oído a ellos, ¿eh? Mm -hmm. Es tan fácil como eso. Ok. Bien. When I came to Madrid for the first time, I had trouble understanding madrileños. It's true, ¿eh? Mm -hmm. Because I learned Spanish in the south of Spain and I was used to el Andalú. <laughs> When I came to Madrid, I had trouble understanding people. I couldn't understand what they were saying. Mm -hmm. Ok. Ok. Good. Well, I hope you won't have trouble understanding me and I hope you won't have trouble remembering the golden rule. When it comes to, cuando se trata de... Preguntas indirectas. Preguntas indirectas. When it comes to indirect questions. What's the golden rule, Annie? Colocar siempre el sujeto y después el verbo. Exactly. I don't know where he lives. Sujeto, verbo. Sujeto, verbo. Okay? I don't know where he lives. No sé lo que hace. O a qué se dedica. I don't know what he, he does. does. What does he do? ¿A qué se dedica? I don't know what he does. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Bien. Uh, no sé cuánto cuesta. I don't know how much it costs. Hey, good. <laughs> it costs. Muy bien. I don't know how much it costs. I don't know where he lives. Sujeto verbo, sujeto verbo, sujeto verbo. Okay? okay. Sujeto verbo. I don't know when it will finish. I don't know what the time is. Sujeto verbo, sujeto verbo. Okay. Tan fácil. Como eso. Thank you ever so much for paying attention and I hope you found at least something from today's show of use when it comes to your English, okay? Thank you again and we'll see you very soon for yet another edition of Rumbo al Inglés. Have fun. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.